So I'm going to talk about um, this problem called that Dutch national flag problem. It's a partitioning problem. It also relates to sorting, especially quick sort uh, partition uh, part. And the problem is essentially that <coughs> we have an array or maybe just a set of, um, let's say, pebbles or maybe just some balls or something like that. And they are of colors red, white, and blue. And what we want is we want to sort them in a way so it's, or separate them in a way such that all the reds come together first and then they get follow they are followed by white uh, by whites and then after that they are followed by blues all blue pebbles or all blue balls like this here and this problem is usually called the Dutch national flag problem because basically the Dutch flag has three stripes we have red at the top and then blue at the bottom and then white in the middle so that's kind of how, how we want to organize these pebbles here and um, the the specificity of this problem is that let's say let's give ourselves the constraint that we are not allowed to scan we are allowed to scan through the array only once which essentially means that we have we have to solve this in open time complexity and the only operations that we can use here are to check like the color of a pebble so to check the value in there in an array or to check um and also um so to check the color in the array only once for each location and also to swap the symbols at two locations. So we can do either look at the like what's the color of the element and swap two symbols at two different locations. So these are the two operations that we can that we can use. And we wanna solve this in O1 time and also in O1 space, right? Which means we, we wanna do it in place and we wanna do it by doing only one pass through the array. Um, this problem also has some different ways we can, like it can be presented in a different way where let's say for example, we have a pivot and we wanna partition the array in a way that all the elements smaller than the pivot are to the left, all the elements equal to the pivot are in the middle and all the elements um, bigger than the pivot are to the right. That's also another way to, that this problem can be um, presented. Uh, and another different way also that you may see it in other places is that you get an array of zero values, zero, one, and two, and we want to put all the zero values first and all the one values in the middle and all the two values at the end. And so it can be, the, the, the problem statement can be different, but the same idea is we have three different possible values and or s like values with some conditions and we want to partition the array in a way that a set of them is in the first portion um, a second set is in the middle portion and the third set is in the third um, portion or section so like here in the in this example we you can see we have blue circles white circles and red circles and the goal here is to put the red circles First, then the white circles together, then the blue circles after that. Um, okay, so now let's see how we can solve this problem. Okay, so let's review the problem here a little bit. So we have blue circles, so something maybe like this, scattered around. Um, and then we have some white circles. And then we have some red. And so let's say we have here one, and then another blue one. Right, and the goal here is to come to um, partition these so that we end up with the blue circles aligned like this. Sorry, the red circles first. So what we want is to have the red. So we have three of these, and then after that, white all together, and then after that, blue ones all together, which we have four of. Right. <coughs> so this is the final goal, but we have some constraint that we have to work with, right? So only operations that we are allowed to use are swap and um, like check the color. And then the other um, the other constraint that we have is that this has to be open time and only one pass, like it can be two pass. Two passes are still open, but we are allowed only one. And um, also of one space, we are not allowed to use any extra space. And so it has to be in place. 
So these are the constraints that we have to work with. Um, okay, so let's see now how can we um, come up with a solution for this then. Okay, so, well, at least what, let's just state what we know here. So the first thing we know is that we need to distinguish three different regions, right? The red and the white and the blue region, right? So distinguish three regions. Let's call them here. Um, so the regions we have here are red, white, and blue, right? So we know that's what we, that's one thing we need to do in the, in the array. But then we can, we also know that at the start we have the entire array where we don't know um, what element goes into which region, right? Um, by region, I'm just calling this portion here first, right? This is the red region, and then we have the white region and the blue region. But at the start, we, we haven't checked the content of each, like each element, we haven't checked the color yet, right? So we don't know. So we have a section that is unknown because we will be inspecting the array by one pass, but before we, we examine an element, it still belongs to a region that we don't know the content of which is yet. So we need to have another region that we can call, it's just unknown elements, right? So let's just call it X region, right? Okay, so now we know we need at least four regions to be able to solve this, right? So maybe we need an extra one for some swapping or something, but at least we need to, we know that we need four regions so we can try that first and if it doesn't work then we can look at more re at introducing more so four regions right we will see later how can we define these regions of course we will we can just define them with pointers right by just putting pointers as the boundaries for each region but for now let's just stick to this okay so now the question becomes what is the order um that we that we should these put this region um in Right, so we know that for in order to get this final solution, we need to have something where we have um, the red region sub first, and then we need to have the 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 white one, so something like here, and then we need the blue um, region, right? But the question becomes, where should the x? Where should we maintain the x portion, right? And Moving elements to this, these sections will be done just via, via the swap here. So now the question becomes, where should we put the X region here? Or where should we maintain it? Um, and the way we are going to do it, so basically we are going to investigate an element in from the X section, find its color out, and then swap it with, swap it so that we can put it in the, in, in this region after examining its color, right? So now we say, where should we put the X Re, uh, the x element the x region right so we have just a couple of possibilities right we can either <coughs> have x region first at the start and then we have error and then we have w and b and we keep investigating until it becomes empty or we could have all the possible i'm just going to put all the possible places the red region first and then the x and then the white and then the blue or we could have something like this or we could have it in this way like at the end but really, if you think about it, it makes sense to have it like this, to have the red section first, right? So that we can just arrange them and then, like, just mentally it's easier if the red section was first, right? So that means we can just eliminate this one, right, at least. Okay, now we have these two sections, these three uh, possibilities. Now, since we put the red section here first, intuitively, it's always good to, to have symmetry in our programs. And so since the red section, which should be in the final result first, we put it first, naturally for symmetry reasons, we should have the blue section last, right? So that means here we could also eliminate this here. And now we are left with two possibilities. And those both are fine and both work. So we can just pick any of them and write our program that way. Um, I'm going to pick this one here. So let's just pick this one. You could also, we could also program it with the second choice, but I'm just going to stick with this one first. And so our heuristic here would be, um, would be that 
what we are going to do is just we are going to mark a region red that is in blue and white that are initially empty and the x section is initially the entire array and we will keep examining the elements of x if if we find that it's red we'll put it in the red pointer last position right which is which would make it part of the red region if we find that it's blue we'll put it in the blue region if we find that it's white we'll put it in the white region and we will keep doing this until x region or section becomes empty that means we are done so this is the main idea right and that's pretty much the main idea so let's just start going into the details of it um okay so now let's just examine um we have actually two kind of special cases considering taking this one of them is um that so one of them is that um, all back the initial state, which is that all of them are in the initial buckets, like all of the circles are in in the zone X or in the region X. So let's call these special cases. So we have the initial state, right? Which pretty much is that when um, all circles are in region X, right? And then we have also kind of the final state, right? Which is that when the region X is empty, we are done. We put everything in its right region and then and then we are done, right? So all so basically region X is empty. So this already tells us something here. Since we need to to, to kind of partition it into sections here and we need to know also when the region x is empty we need kind of ways to define the boundaries of each region right so the way that we usually do that is just with using pointers to indices in the array right and so that's what we would be using here so we need to kind of define what would be the indices that will represent each region and so to do that while using the the division the um, the division or the partitioning um, that we agreed on, which is this one here, well, we could just define it like this. So we would have first the red region, right? And then we would have the white region, same thing as what we said here. So like this. And then we would have the, the X region, right? We said RW, X and B. And so that would be X, let's just mark it with, with something like this. So this would be the initial, the initial one, which is X. And then we'd have the blue region here. And this you could imagine is of course in, in the same array, right? This here, just the same array. Um, and then maybe I should do something where, just so that it's clear that it's in the same array, the boundary is kind of cross. So this is the white region here. And this here is the blue region. Um, and so now, if we kind of just denote the, the boundaries, let's just, so this starts out from the first index, and let's call this index where the red region ends, let's call that um, low maybe. Right, and then let's just call the one where the white region ends. Let's call that mid, and then let's call the um, the portion where the X region ends. Let's call that high, and then when the blue region ends, that's just the last position, which is n minus one if n is the length of the array, right? And so what this means is that now we have the boundaries. So let's just write. Our um, when when do we know we are done? The final state is when region X is empty. So that tells us that we need to continue while X is not empty, right? We know that. And so that this here, if we translate it in terms of these boundaries, that would be while X is not empty. X when will X be empty? Is when mid becomes bigger than high. Like we advance mid enough, and and so when mid and high meet x has one element right but when mid is bigger than high that means x is empty now and so we we need to continue until mid is while mid is smaller or equal to high when it becomes bigger x is empty we can exit 
So now we kind of know at least for that we need to continue processing until this condition is no longer valid. Now the next thing in an iteration that we need to find out is well by how much should we decrease this x region here, right? And so the answer to that question is well the simplest choice is just by one, right? Um, so that basically as soon as we do the index mid plus one um, or we do high minus one we would just we would just um, the the condition will no longer be valid right and so we know already that we can decrease by one um, okay so now that we know this um, let's try to figure out a pseudocode for the solution so another thing that we need for our loop here is we need to initialize these pointers, right? So what should be the value at the start for these pointers? So if we have an array like this, where should be low start at, where should mid start at, and where should high start at, and where should n minus one start at? So remember that at the initial state, we have a bunch of these um, circles that we don't know the value of yet. So we have some of them like this. Um, Maybe like this, right? And so naturally, while well, we know that we don't, the the red region is still empty, right? Because we haven't investigated any element, and so we don't know what where it should be. So since it's empty, well, it starts from zero and ends at low, right? And so what about mid? Well, mid is the start of the x region, right? And so at the start, the entire array is the x region because we have we don't know. The, each circle we haven't checked the, the color of it yet, right? So mid also starts out as the start of the x region starts out as the entire array. And what is high? Like what is the end of the x region? It's the entire array, right? So it's also here. And then so that the um, x region is from mid to high. And then the here we have n minus 1, the end of the blue region. The blue region also is empty because we don't know yet uh, where the value is, right? And the white region is also empty, low to mid, which are on the same position because we don't know the white circles yet, right? And so we know the initialization for our values here is that, well, low is ne needs to start at, start at 0, mid also needs to start at 0, high needs to start at n minus 1, right? Okay, so now let's try to write um, our pseudocode here for this solution. So, or, or let's try to write it actually in Python. So the function definition is um, Dutch flag sort, right? And we start out with a set of items, right? And now um, we said our initialization needs to be that we need to three pointers, low, mid, and high. And low and mid start out as zero, and high starts out as mi n minus one, right? And we said that our terminate will continue while mid is less than or equal to high, which is the equivalent of while the x region is not empty. So we will keep going while mid is smaller or equal to high. Okay, so now what should what value should we investigate? Remember, we are looking at the x region, and we maintain the x region by this mid pointer. Right, so we will keep, we will check an element in the x. So what we will do is we have the x regions like this, right? It's it's uh, we are like marking it by this mid pointer, right? So when we check a value here, let's say we check a circle and we find that it's red and we put it in the red region. What we will do next is we will advance mid, right? Because mid need is the start of the um, start of the x region. Right, so basically, low is the end of the red region, and it's the start of the white region. Mid is the end of the white region, the start of the X region. High is the end of the X region and the start of the blue region, right? And so here, once we move it, an element we know it's red, and we, we moved it, we advance mid, right? We swapped it and we advance mid. So here, what this means is that in order to check the color of the of the like start checking so here we'll start checking the first circle we will check the value at mid and every time because the other ones we already determined it, where in which region they should go and we already put them there 
So what interests us is the region that we don't know the, the colors of the circles yet. And so we'll keep checking the mid values. And so here, what this means is we'll need to <coughs> check the color of items. Um, so the color that we are interested by here is the color of the item at position mid, right? And now we will check, well, if it's, if it's red, what should happen? Well, let's say we have it like this. So let's say we have it like this. An array like this starts out with a red value. And maybe after that we have a white one, or maybe a blue one after that, and then maybe a blue one here, and maybe a white one here, right? So let's say we have this array here. So the first we have here low and mid, right? And let's say we find that it's red. Well. It's in the red region, right? Remember, we want the first section to be um, to be red, right? So that means, well, we need to advance. We just need to leave it there, right? Um, so it, for the first position, it needs to stay there, right? But if we if we were like in a position like this, and we have let's say mid that was red that was here. And then we already have a red region here. And then we are examining um, let's say an element at position um, mid. So let's say this is our mid value here and we have our low position here and we find that it's red, right? So we need to put it here. So that means we need to swap the value at position low with the one at position mid, right? Because we haven't yet checked. Um, we haven't. We, we know that it's red, so we we know that it needs to be at the value in the. It needs to be part of the red region, right? So what we need to do here is that we need to say that we are going to swap the items at position low and mid. And with this case, even if the value in the position red, posi uh, the red circle was the first position, since both low and mid have the same value, it will stay in that region, right? Which is the correct thing to do. And so now once we do this, well, we already know the value and we already put it in the right section, right? So it's no longer part of the X region. So we need to advance the mid pointer past that element. And also for the low region, since we put a value, for the red region, since we put a value at position low, that we know is red, definitely. And since low needs to be after the last element of red, so basically our, our invariant here is that it's good to write these invariants that we have here. So our invariants are the following. So one is that all for all i between 0 and r not inclusive so r is not in the the value at position r, uh, low sorry low i meant the value at position low is after the last element of the red region so for all of these the value should be let's call these i since it's items item at position i should be red is equal to red. And then for this, the region after that, which is the white region, right? Well, all the, the white region, as we said, it's controlled by after, including low and then, and then up until mid, right? So all the values from low to mid Again, mid is not inclusive, so these items should be red, should be white. And then, for all, this is what our array while we are iterating needs to maintain. And then for after that, for the x unknown region, we just don't know, so we are going to leave that. But for the blue elements, anything after from high to the end needs to be in the blue region, right? So what this means is that high 
and then to the end, which means less than n, these values should be blue. So these are our invariants that we need to maintain. And so if we go here, um, the value at position low is not should not be red, right? Because low is not in it. And so since we know that the value we just put in low is red, we need to move the index low so that we keep the invariant there. And I forgot to add an if here. So before doing this, we check if color is, this is only if color is red, right? And after that, so if the color is not red, then either blue or, um, it's either blue or white, right? So let's first check if, um, let's do it in Python here. So if the color is, at this point, it's, let's say white, what should happen in that case, right? So what if the if a mid value is white, what should happen? So let's say we have an array like this. We already have some a red section here. And then now we have the white section already here. And now we are examining an element in the X region, right? And then let's say that element now is this. Let's say we have a blue region here, right? And we are examining this element. So that means that our mid position is here. Our, of course, low is here. Our, um, um, yeah, this is just the mid the value after the white section, right? So what this means is that, well, it's just the next element, right? So because mid, remember, mid is just after the last element of white, right? So th what this means is that if we are examining an element here, at mid, well, this element belongs to the white section, right? So what this means is that, well, we just extend this white section here to include it, which means we to do that, we just advance mid by one, right? We just say mid is no longer in this position, we increase its position by one, and it's here, so that we can investigate the next element. So what this means is all we need to do in this case here is just say mid plus one. And that's enough, right? Now, the last case is the else case, which means in our case here, it's just when it's blue. So if the element we are examining is blue here, so remember blue here ends at position, uh, starts at position high. So if the element is blue, what this means is that, well, we just need to extend the blue region we just need, sorry, not extend, we just need to swap, right? Because maybe um, it's not like here because of the array, it appears very close by, but maybe the array is really big. And let's say we have the blue region here and we have high here. And just we found a blue um, element here. What we should do actually is just swap it, right? Just since high is part of the blue region, right? We already know that the element at position high is in the blue region. So what we need to do is swap this with the element before high, right? And so to do that, we need to do we we have two we have two choices actually here. So here, since the initial region is empty, we don't need it to be n minus one. We don't need it to be one element. I'm just going to initialize this to n instead. So this is going to be initialized to n. And so here, what this means is that, well, we need to do high minus one, and we need to swap the value at position high with the one at position mid. And we need to keep mid where it is because we don't know what this circle what the value of this circle is. Maybe it's red, and then when we swap, it is going to become red here, and then it's going to become blue here. And we will extend this, right? And so that's what we will be doing here. We will say a high minus one, and then swap, which means items high, and then items at position mid. We'll swap these, right? Which means we'll put here mid, and items at position high. 
and that's pretty much it so now that's we are done so we examine the colors and we swap each time and when we we are done when the x region is empty right um, and we maintain these invariants that we need which is always the values between position zero and low low excluded are red and the values between position low and mid mid excluded are white and the values between high and n where n is excluded are blue right um okay so now i just typed the solution that we just saw in the overview um the only distinction is actually high i, I just went back to doing initializing high to n minus one and then decrementing at the end after swapping which which basically means that we put the element in high position and then we move because uh, the, the the high is kind of the delimiter just before the start of the blue section right and then what i'm doing here is just generating a set of values that are that are red blue and white and then shuffling them so that i can get a random order and then i make sure at the end that my dutch flag sort function does indeed sort them correctly so let's see here so you could see here original ball order that we got is blue white white red white red so it's a random order and then when we sorted it we got red section white section here and then blue section if i generate again another random order you could see here i have a random set of white red white blue red white red blue in a random order and then here i put them in section of sections of red white and blue right um, in terms of time complexity for this function here you could see we are doing one iteration where uh, one pass where mid starts out as zero and high starts out as n minus one and as until they meet we are d basically we keep going until they meet right until the mid is more than high which is almost after the immediately after they met they met right and every time we we either increase mid or decrease high right so in these two conditions we increase mid and this condition we decrease high so we are guaranteed that after n iteration we will exit the loop right and so this means that it's just over in time and it's also just one pass, right? In terms of space complexity, we are only using the, these three extra variables, nothing more, so it's all of one space also. So it kind of fits the, con the constraint that we had at the start of um, when we explained the problem, right? Um, yeah. Um, okay, so that's it for this problem. It's a very useful problem to know because um, it's kind of used in part in um, quicksort, the partitioning, part of quicksort um yeah and there, there are variants of this problem like w a simpler version on just two colors there is also a more complicated one with four colors and you can get more where it gets more complex um but this is an this is th th this problem comes up often and so it's good to know the the solution um yeah so that's it for this problem thanks for watching and see